Hello everyone. Today we're going to build in Python a GPT-4 autocoder for HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Let's take a look at some examples. This is entirely generated by GPT-4, including the idea itself, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, all included. This one's a bit crazy. Yeah, this is really lovely. It's an automated process. That's why I call it autocoder. Let's start by taking a look at how we can build something like this. I think this is, think of this as a prototype and inspiration. You can use this any way you like. This is not a perfect solution. This doesn't work perfectly, but I think some of the ideas are really interesting and you might really apply it in your own applications. Let's run this code real quick and see what happens and how it works. This code will be available for download from my Patreon supporters. The link will be in the description. We're going to talk about the code in detail right after we demonstrate it. Let's just quickly run it. When we first run it, just give it a moment. We first print the images. This is just, it was for my benefit to see if we were really retrieving the names of the images. Then we are now generating a design idea. Now we are actually communicating with GPT-4. It will soon return to us a design idea. Here we go. We have our design idea. Title is animated image gallery. There's a description and layout. This is quite verbose. GPT-3.5 doesn't do this much explanation. But anyway, so this is our idea we have received from GPT-4. Then we have inputted it into another call to generate HTML and CSS. Now we've just made another call to GPT-4 with this design idea so that it might return us HTML and CSS. This is going to take some time, but let's see what happens. I just want to mention while this is generating, once this is generated, this web browser that we have imported is going to launch it into our browser right away so that we can actually take a look and see if you like it or not. Okay, actually we have received our HTML and CSS right here, as you see, in a JSON format, which was appropriate so that we had created a design folder and we had created an HTML document right here, style.css, okay, and script.js. Also, the style.css has been created as well and images have been copied under the design folder. However, the images are not displaying. I'm not sure why, but this is the part where the interaction comes in. Now that we've taken a look at our design, the terminal is asking, do we like the design? We can just answer no. And once we answer, let's try it again and generate, it's going to generate a new design idea. And after that, it's going to generate a new HTML and CSS, and it's going to overwrite this index and style CSS. Let's see what happens. Okay, so it has generated this one this time around. Okay, just only one image, but it looks pretty nice. We can again say no and generate a new one or say yes. And then it will switch to generating JavaScript code for this. We have we are feeding it the index HTML and style style.css. So keep that in mind. I have found that it doesn't do much with the JavaScript code, but here we are. It didn't really do much. Again, you are given the option of saying no and generating a new JavaScript or saying yes and then being done. So you can repeat this process as many times as you like. And you can get inspiration from the code it has generated. Maybe you can use this as a learning tool. There we go. So I hope you found this useful. Let's take a look at the code and see how we can build something like this. Let's start by taking a look at the code. I just want to mention that I have some images that is already prepared in the images folder. There were 16 of them, which we're going to give as references to GPT-4. I had some handpicked examples from the generations that I was being able, I was able to create you know, using GPT-4. These are the ones that I was showing you. And this is our file. We are importing OS for directory and file manipulation, shuttle, so that we can auto copy the images from one location to another when we create our design folder, web browser, so we can automatically launch the index.html, which is generated. Of course, OpenAI, you need to pip install OpenAI and JSON. You need to also set your OpenAI API key. I have done it in my user environment variables. That's the best way to do it. So this way you can keep it a secret or you can just define it right here in the code below. Then we're just defining a model. We're going to use GPT-4, but you can use 3.5 Turbo as well. Then we define a function to generate a design idea. This is the get design idea and we are giving it to images. We're going to get to how we are taking care of the images here in a moment. And we print, we're generating a design idea and we get a response from OpenAI's chat completion. 
model is the model, which in this case is GPT-4. And the message is, is just chat completion's usual role dictionary, the JSON. We just simply say generate the website design idea using these images, and then we put the images in. We're going to see what this is here in a moment. Images are PNG numbered. Okay. I said use shadows and CSS animations. Then we get the content from the response, just like this. Then we strip it so that maybe if it has back text or something, we get rid of that. Then here's the function to generate HTML and CSS. This is another call that we're going to make to the before. So the first one is just to get an idea. And when we have that idea, which is returning to us right here, then if we input this content into the HTML and CSS function is a design idea. And we also put the images in there as well. And then this time we say, create HTML and CSS separately for this website design idea with a JSON object keys being the HTML and CSS. We input the design idea. Do not return anything else other than the JSON object. So you can read this. We are also inputting the images. Then we are returning the content. But while we were parsing the JSON object, we are loading the JSON with the JSON.loads of the content which is returned because we're, we're trying to aim for getting an HTML and CSS keys within this JSON object. And then we're assigning to HTML underscore code and CSS underscore code, just like this. But in the case that this process fails, then we are printing an error message and we are actually trying again, just recalling the function. It's calling it recursively. I just want to say we are not, this is, if you run this app, if you run this script, it will, if it keeps getting error messages, which it doesn't, but then it'll just keep sending the prompt for a completion again and again. I just want to mention that this costs tokens, so keep that in mind. It can add up pretty quickly, especially with GPT-4. Anyway, once we have our HTML code and CSS code, then we are returning it. Then we are actually defining to get a JavaScript code as well. This is very similar. We're giving it the design idea. This time, we are also giving it the HTML and CSS code. Then we are defining in its user prompt. HTML code is the HTML code. CSS code is the CSS code. Then we say create JavaScript code for this website design idea. Within a JSON object with a key JS, do not return triple backticks because it tends to do that sometimes. Anyway, we are using strip as well. So hopefully that'll help. So we have a three part process. We are generating the idea, then the HTML and CSS, and then the JavaScript. But we are actually asking the user's contribution for that as well. And we're going to see that here in a moment. And we are defining the images, right? We just we are getting the image names and we're just doing a quick print here. And then we say while true because we want this to run continuously until it's done. We get the design idea with that function, get design idea, which we have defined right up here. So this is the first call that we are making to GPT-4. We're getting a design idea and we are printing it. Then now that we have our design idea, we assign, we extract the HTML code and CSS code from the get HTML and CSS right here. And then we are printing the HTML code and the CSS code. Then we are checking if the design folder exists. If not, we are creating it. Currently, we don't have it. Then we are creating an index.html file and write whatever the GPT-4 returned to us is the HTML code. And we are doing the same with the CSS. Then we are copying the images which I already prepared into this design folder so that the index can have index.html and the CSS styling can have access to it. And then we are launching it, launching the HTML. And then we ask the user in the terminal, do you like the design? Yes, no. If the user answers yes, then we, that means that we are going to keep this design, before, meaning the HTML and CSS. Then we are actually initiating to get the uh, JavaScript code. For the JavaScript code, we are inputting the design idea, HTML code, and the CSS code. And we are printing the JavaScript code that is returned. Then we are saving it under the design directory in the script.js. I have this code right here, but I believe it's a bit redundant. We really don't need this, but I'll just leave it right there. I just don't want to make a change right now. Sorry about that. That was my phone. Anyway, then we are actually entering the script.js here. Because the reason maybe this is necessary, I'm not sure. You can. There's a better way to solve this, but 
GPT-4, when it returns index.html, it likes to name the script source as the scripts.js. And I just figured this would work. So now index just ends up having two script files a lot of times. Anyway, this is just a minor concern, not a big deal. Then I rewrite it right here after we have modified it. Okay, and now we, after we have our JavaScript file, then we relaunch the web browser, we refresh it. So then the JavaScript effect can be seen. Honestly, JavaScript doesn't end up adding too much, but essentially it's a necessary part of most website design. So you can make your own decisions on this. Then we ask the user, do you like the new dynamic design? Yes, no. Then whatever the user answers, if answers yes, then say, great, then we're done. We have a HTML file, CSS file, and JavaScript. If not, we say, let's try another JavaScript code. And then we do a, because we are in a while loop, this will make another call to GPT to get a new JavaScript code. The same is true, of course, with, with the get HTML and CSS, because if the user answers yes, then only then we get the JavaScript code. If the user answers no, then we say, let's try again. And we get a new HTML and CSS. I see so in the demonstration on the terminal. So in conclusion, we have created three different functions. One to get one for GPT-4 to generate an idea. Then we feed that idea into another function which generates HTML and CSS based on that idea. And then once we are satisfied, and then we ask after we ask the user whether they like the HTML and CSS design, then we once the user confirms that they like it, then we feed the HTML and CSS plus the idea back into GPT-4 to get a JavaScript function. Now, this is a quick prototype. Like I said, feel free to modify it and make it your own. I believe this is a great idea. I was I really had a lot of fun creating it. Like I said, the uh, code files, al along with some of the hand-picked examples I was able to create using the system, will be available for Patreon supporters. Link will be in the description. And thank you for watching.